Hello and welcome to the Timberland Investor. Today I want to talk about one of the most important metrics in forestry and that would be basal area per acre. It's a prime measurement of density and is used to determine uh, stocking levels, density, it can be used for inventory projects or just quick, uh, quick estimates of uh, wood on a given acreage. Uh, but before we begin getting into how to measure and the tools that are used, let's discuss exactly what basal area is. So it's a bit of a complicated subject, so I thought uh, I'd bring a little whiteboard to help us out. So what basal area is, if you imagine the forest as a you know, kind of flat ground, and you took on a horizontal plane, an imaginary horizontal plane, uh, you intersect every tree at breast height, which is 4.5 feet off the ground, and you take the surface area of all those logs and determine how many square feet there is of uh, the face of those logs in that acre. So if we look here, you imagine this is your plane, and these are badly drawn. I'm not an artist, I'm a forester. Uh, these are the, uh, the log faces that are intersected, and they all represent a certain amount of surface area. Now, if we imagine that we squeeze those together into a, uh, another square form on this panel, and let's say it all came out to 200 square feet, that's your basal area per acre. So yeah, like I said, that's a prime measurement of uh, wood density, essentially, and it's, um, it gives you more of a complete picture of what's on the ground than, say, trees per acre, which doesn't say anything about how big the trees are, etc. and it's used for inventory and everything else under sun. So what I just explained is, of course, more theoretical. In the woods, you're not going to be able to have an imaginary plane intersect all the trees. You're not going to be able to push them together in a little square, so you're stuck having to take measurements that are more representative of what that is. Uh, and moreover, you can't measure an entire acre or let, you know, thousands of acres, millions of acres. So you're going to have to point sample. Uh, you take individual points and you can measure how many square feet of basal area per acre that point represents and average them together. And to do that, we take readings using two tools. First, we have the angle gauge. And then we have the prism gauge, which is just kind of a piece of glass. So let's go over how to use both. So uh, looking closely at the angle gauge for a minute, what you'll see is you have a chain and then this piece of metal here, which has actually four slots. And they have, let me zoom in here, numbers on each end. So this is 5, 10, 20, and then if you flip it to the side here, that's 40. And uh, what those numbers represent is your basal area factor which basically is the number you're going to multiply your point tally by to be able to get the measurement of basal area per acre. Uh, but before we get into that, let's ex talk about exactly what it means to tally a tree with this thing. So moving back to the poor drawing board, uh, we have a representation of the angle gauge, and when you hold it up, you're looking at a tree. Now, this is out. This tree does not, or it, it does fit within the edges of those slots, so it's too far away. That tree is counted out. With this tree, the edges exceed the boundaries here. So this tree is counted in. So this is out, and this is in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my angle gauge, I'm going to take this end, put it in my mouth, go around in a plot. I'm going to find a starting point. I'm going to stick to that starting point so I don't lose my spot. Maybe if you have ribbon on you, you can tie ribbon. That's what we always did in the woods. Uh, or you can just, you know, an odd tree, some sort of landmark. You start at that area, and then you spin around. And you look at every tree and see if uh, it extends past the boundaries of whichever slot you're using, or if it fits within. And if it extends past, then the tree is in, otherwise it's out. Tally up all the trees that are in. So you spin around in a circle. One, two, three, four. And you spin around using yourself as the plot center. So you, you know, staying in one spot, you spin around like that and you tally the trees. I won't do it here because it's gonna be boring to hear me just spouting off numbers, but uh, let's say there's 20 trees here and I'm using a 10 factor. So this is that middle one. I could use 10 or 20, but we'll use 10. And we'll say that there's 20 trees here. 10 
times 20, so your tally times your basal area factor is going to give you 200. So you have 200 square feet of basal area per acre on this plot. So uh, if you're using a basal area of 20 and you got five trees in that plot, then it's 100. So you just multiply the basal area factor by the tally. That's always what you do. Now, uh, if you're wondering which basal area factor you should use, uh, there are no real hard and fast rules. I think a good rule of thumb is you want to get at least, uh, we'll say, seven trees in a given plot. Uh, so if you have bigger trees, you can use 20, like 20 would do fine here. If you're using smaller trees, use 10. If you're out west, really, that's what the uh, 40 is. If you have a huge stand of uh, Douglas fir or whatever. Um, and uh, for really small trees, there's a five on here. I've never used five practically, but if you have really small trees, that could work too. Um, so you choose the proper basal area factor and you tally up those trees and that's your square feet of basal area per acre. You do that several times in several plots around your property. You average it together. There's your answer. Now let's move on to the prism gauge. So the prism gauge it's a very similar process. You're taking a plot, you're going in a circle, and you're counting trees that are in and out, or in or out. But if you notice, two, 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 there, there's an offset to this lens. Let me see if I can get it to, there's an offset there. So it takes the image and offsets it a little bit. So let's talk about how to use this to count trees that are in or out. Okay, I'm gonna bring back out the drawing board. Now, if we look, we have two representations. Now, we're going to have that offset in either side, but in one case, the bowl of the tree is going to be substantially offset from the reality of the position of that bowl so that there's no intersection between the edge of the bowl on the image and in reality. They're going to be separated. They're not touching each other from your perception. In this example, there is still uh, an intersection between the two. They are touching each other. This tree is in and this one is out. So you count this tree, you don't count this one. And you go around and you count all the trees that are sufficiently close so that it is not offset entirely off the boundary of where that tree actually is. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, there's another key difference between the prism gauge and the angle gauge. With the prism gauge, you were the plot center and you're moving around like that. With the prism gauge, the prism is the plot center. So you have to move around the plot center like that and count that way. If you do it like this, your radius is gonna to be too big and you're gonna get inaccurate results. So you go around a circle, you do that, you count all the trees where the offset is still intersecting with the real position of the tree you count your number. This is a 10 factor prism. It's written on the end here. Now, unlike the angle gauge, there is one basal area factor per prism. So you generally only have one on you. This one is a little more versatile for that reason. You can have the optionality of having the different basal area factors. With this one, you're stuck with whatever you have. 10 tends to be the most versatile. So if you're stuck with one, I'd go with 10, but uh, you know, the choice is yours and whatever you need it for. Another key note about this that you need to understand is that on both of these instruments, they're measuring the square footage, square feet of basal area per acre. If you are in Canada or if you're in Europe, it's going to be measuring square meters per hectare. Now, when I was working as a forester, uh, I spent most of my time up in northern Maine, right on the border of uh, Quebec and New Brunswick. It got a little tricky. We were kind of talking in different languages sometimes. There's a Canadian company that always spoke in terms of square meters per hectare. Other companies that spoke in square feet per, uh, per acre. If you're solidly in the United States, you probably don't have to worry about it. Um, but if you do kind of live a cross-border life, be aware of what you're actually measuring because the tools are calibrated for each unit. They're not interchangeable. And if you're using one or the other, uh, you need to know. You can do the conversions later on, but you need to know what exactly it is that you're measuring. Okay, so now that we've gone over the angle gauge and the prism gauge, I can tell you about the forbidden tool that you can use to measure basal area per acre. 
And now, if you uh, are more academically minded or you're a stickler for accuracy, you might want to shut the video off at this point because you're not going to like what you're about to hear. Your thumb on most people is uh, equal to the 10 basal area factor on an angle gauge. So for me, it's perfect. It works perfectly. If my arm is fully extended, the widest part of my thumb is the same size as a slot on the 10 basal area factor on an angle gauge. So I can move around. Same rules, it's just opposite because this is a closed space. But if the edges of the uh, tree extend past my thumb, it's in. If they don't, uh, it's, it's out. And you go around in a circle and you can count. Multiply that by 10 because your basal area factor is 10 in that case there's your basal area per acre. Personally, I would recommend that you actually have the real tool so you can calibrate it first and see if it works for you um, and then use it later on. And also be aware of the limitations, you know, uh, the width of your thumb can vary. You can hit it with a hammer and it can swell up. You can eat a meal of Chinese and be a sodium puffy boy the next day. Uh, just be aware of those factors and the fact that it really is just a quick and dirty estimate. But if you're walking around your, your woods and you just kind of want to do a quick little cruise or let's say you're scoping out properties you might want to buy and you want to you get some quick numbers, it can work. I'm not going to judge you. So it's good to know about that. A couple things you should be aware of as well, just some finer notes. Uh, the first thing is taking the plots. Obviously, like I said before, um, one plot in one area is not going to be representative of your entire property. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go around and take uh, several plots. How many is gonna completely depend. I'd say uh, minimum of, if you have a 20 acre property, the minimum of five, maybe one every five acres uh, should suffice. Um, or you know, if you only have five acres and do two or three. The other thing too is with either instrument, you're gonna have cases, probably a lot of cases, where the tree is just on the border of being in or out. You know, it just touches the edges, whatever. Now, uh, if you're doing a serious inventory project, which if you're watching this video, my guess is you probably aren't, uh, there is a, an actual limiting distance. So for every diameter, we are going to know the distance from the plot center, where uh, if it's beyond that distance, it's out or in. And um, that's gonna give you a much more accurate representation than just using a tool. However, if you're just doing a fairly quick or not that rigorous and academic uh, measurement, what you might want to do is every other borderline tree count in. So if you have one borderline, count it in, have another, count it out, and then it kind of averages out. And I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb. Nothing's ever really perfect, but um, for the average person who's going to be doing this in a non-professional uh, setting, I think that works perfectly fine. This, how are you going to use this information? And well, if, if you know nothing about forestry or you're not very well versed in it, maybe these numbers are gonna mean absolutely nothing to you. There's not much of a way to get real context behind it. But you should familiarize yourself with volume tables for your area. If you combine it with heights, you know the heights of the, the average height of trees, which you, know, you can even get a rough estimate from Google Earth if you need to. Um, you can get cords per acre, 1,000 board feet per acre, like I was saying earlier, silviculturally, it can tell you if you, uh, it might suggest anyway, if you are due for harvest. Um, and it can, it can just be used as a proxy for how much wood you have on the property, which can be a proxy for timber values, um, the economics of a harvest, uh, the viability of a silvicultural treatment. It's, it's really at the heart of forestry, so it's hard to describe exactly what you would need it for when really the answer is managing your property at the end of the day like it's the most basic measurement in my opinion um, so hopefully this video kind of opened your eyes to how you can measure it uh, what it means how you can use it to your advantage and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it thanks